Hi there Stacey in North Carolina, this is your lucky day. It's raining outside, I've finished Raggett's portrait. Nothing to do in between at the moment, before I move on to new ideas and projects in painting. And you requested um, a workshop or a demonstration of a fairly simple uh, pastel which you could have a go at. So we'll have a little workshop, shall we, this morning. As you can hear it's raining outside, not very pleasant at all. Had some snow around the country, but not here, so I can't even go and photograph those to paint. So a friend of mine, was coming to visit me in France, in fact, to look for houses, a uh, couple, next summer. Um, so we have a couple of photographs from Scotland. We're going to use these ones today and uh, have a go at them. <coughs> so I've just seen them up on screen. I've given you three. I don't know I'm going to use all three yet. I'm not going to use uh, two of them, we'll see. Um, uh, rather than just do one technique, I'm going to show you how we can use three different techniques um, with the similar subjects to get in different effects, um, and they're all going to be fairly easy ones to do. So we're going to use chalk with some cheap pastels over the top, we're going to use the more expensive unison pastels, and we're going to use water with pastels as well to show you the different effects we can get. So fairly simple workshop today using different methods and techniques for cheaper pastels, for harder pastels, and with the more expensive uh, unison pastels. We've got that here, we've got the Ulysses here and the inscribed there. I'll show them to you now and the different sort of papers we're going to use. Now, the papers. I've got some Ongres pastel paper here. It comes in these lovely pads. And you'll see that they use tracing paper in between to stop the sheets from smudging when you're travelling. So that's a very useful tip to remember that you can either use newspaper or tracing paper in between your sheets to uh, stop them from smudging. Now, these Ongres pads usually come with the orange peel surface of the paper upwards. I prefer not to use the orange peel side, I use the smoother side, this one, um, because the orange peel side gives that texture, which I don't really like, and it's quite difficult to get rid of it. If you wanted to do that texture, if you needed that texture for something like orange peel, well fine, but otherwise I think it fights against you. So I would use the reverse side of the paper, the smoother side. The bite of the paper has nothing to do with the orange peel texture. This other side of the paper is in fact as nice as the top side because it will take the pastel just as well but it's smoother. So I've taken two sheets of grey there from an Ongres pastel pad. I don't want very big sheets today, although normally I use much larger sheets as you saw with the pastel painting I've just done of uh, Raggy's wife. <coughs> I'm also going to be using a sheet of watercolour paper. In this case I'm using just a sheet of knot practice paper. Um, if I wanted a smooth surface with watercolour, if I wanted a smooth surface with pastel, then I would use a hot press paper. But in this case, the cold pressed or a knot will do fine. A box of white chalks I'm going to need, an oval mop, and a small watercolour round brush, some water. We've got my set of unisons here. Beautiful set of unisons look ready to go. They're lovely soft pastels, and amongst them I have some cheaper pastels, some inscribes. But today I'm also going to show you how you can use the cheaper inscribed pastels, uh, which are wonderful sets and much brighter colours as well, um, quite effectively, but over white chalk as well. It's a technique that I developed years ago when uh, working with school children. We didn't have much money and we had to use cheaper materials, so we used the white chalk and the inscribes into them to make lovely soft painting effects, um, which didn't cost us too much on cheaper, even sugar paper. We weren't even using pastel paper then. So that's the techniques we're going to be doing. You'll notice that I've already, with these photographs, um, not only given you the photographs that you can copy from, but also given you, if you can screen print, you can uh, screen save, I've given you the photographs with lines and grids already drawn up so that you can do your drawing within those grids, which I'll show you in just a moment. So let's get prepared for that. What I'm going to do is just take my paper down. Uh, don't just tape at the corners only. Do tape all the way around with masking tape. If you tape at the corners, you tend to find the paper can start moving on you. And it's not much fun if that happens. So tape all the way around. There's only a few pence worth more tape. And this cheap masking tape is fine for this job. There we go. And for the water and pastel one, the watercolour paper, I can't pop it in this board. So I'm going to use a smaller board, especially for that. I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm not going to stretch the paper. Just keep it simple for you today. Some of these things you can do at home quite easily. 
just tape around the watercolour paper ever so quickly, ever so easily and for the water and pastel one with the watercolour paper I'm going to use a China Graph pencil as well a China Graph pencil very useful little tool you'll notice that this one's a black one you can get them in colours that to peel it to make it sharper all I have to do is pull back the string and literally peel off the paper like this and if I'm out in the field working on plein air this is great because I don't have to use a knife it's there immediately the beauty of the China Graph pencils is they're waterproof but they will just take on paint and so on so if I use the pastels with water they're going to be opaque or semi-transparent this will just show through and it's great for snow scenes. And I'm going to show you how we can use this for snow scenes with watercolour and pastel, or in this case just pastel and water and, and the, the China Graph pencil. So I've set up my, my studio now with the two sheets of pastel paper there vertically on the easel. But I've put the watercolour paper over here at a slight angle because I'm working with water, I always prefer to have a, a slight angle and it flat. Uh, it, it's, it is fun to work with pastel and water vertically if you want it dribbles down the paper. Anyway. So I've got them set out easily for myself here. There we are. Beautiful pastels there, unisons there, and my brushes and water over here. One of the first things you'll notice, even with the printing of these, that the printing on the ordinary paper, the plain uh, matte paper, is much different to the printing of the one on the gloss, which is much deeper and richer. Now, this can work for and against us. If I want really deep, deep rich colours, then obviously the photo matte or the photo gloss is great. But if I want lighter colours, I'm printing on the ordinary paper, which is that much softer effect. This would be rather nice for the, uh, the ones with the, with the white chalk and blending the pastel into it, I have a feeling. Uh, whereas this one would be rather nice and much stronger colours. But in this particular case of the water and pastel, I'm going to use this one. Um, and you'll notice that the lighter version has the lines across it. Let me just show you this idea of how to use the grids first of all. We don't have to be exact for this. If I just measure out approximately my halfways and quarters on this. Now I can normally work just by guessing where these things come, just by scale of sight. And I'm not going to be far off with those marks. If you're doing a portrait it would be more important for something that's really so recognisable by having great detail and proportions absolutely correct. But if we look at this now we can see that things where things come. Now if I were to draw lines across here just to give you a starting point. Well, for instance where do things come on this one? Well we've got a lot of sky in this anyway so I'm going to worry about that too much. But if we take this composition here now and say right halfway up here which is the second block up that mountain line comes on here. I'm going to do it very very lightly and it starts here, it starts here it comes almost to halfway there, so it's a very easy way to do this. It comes down in the middle here to just below halfway, so just there's a point here, look where it comes down. And then that mountain gradually just drops over to that. We come up to, now we're going to come this ways up, one, two, three points in here. So one, two, three here, that's where that mountain top comes. How high up? Again about one, two, three up, so one, two, three up. And that's where that mountain top's going to come. So I can just gently curve that mountain up to there, approximately here. It comes down to just below halfway here, down to here. And then here, we're, we're about a third down again there. One, two, three. We can come in with this mountain range here. The way that that comes up and into there. And then this mountain, just beyond halfway here, drops down like that, below here and comes all the way along underneath here it comes down to about a quarter here so there's our we can we can, we can subdivide these up look into the quarters as well there's our quarter here and that line will come along to here there's that little line of trees here so you see how easy it is this way to um, to scale and draw just by gridding it up as soon as you can though, you don't want to bother with these grids, you can just imagine. You can just make marks on the paper and marks on the photograph at the, at the sides and then just come up to where they would meet with your eye and your hand. But if you need to draw a grid, that's fine. This is the way to do it. 
So down here, a little bit of snow. I'm going to raise this slightly up for the composition sake because I'm coming slightly above my quarter line here, all the way along there, just so I know where things are coming. So that's my composition. It's very, very simple. There's more sky than anything in this. I'm going to show you how to do the skies with water and pastel as well. So this is where my line of the trees comes. Then there's another line just below it of the fields coming in. And there's some little buildings here. I want to make a bit more of these little buildings. Just, just here, look. And here. That's where I want them to go. And what I'm going to do in a moment is show you how we can use this China Graph pencil to already make our darks in this, which is very effective with watercolour and pastel, but will still work with pastel. So there's, there's a way of using our, our grid to do this work. Now where did these trees come? This one comes here, look, just on here. This one comes about ooh, halfway, just, just beyond here. So those, those three are there. There's one here, and then we've got a whole just line coming through here. And they come to just below this line here. Coming across to here, we've got another one just here. And we've got a lovely fence post here that I want to use, and another fence post here I want to use, quite important, and some trees in between. Right, what I'm going to do now is, using the much darker photograph, is I'm going to make my marks very, very dark with the China Graph pencil. I'm deliberately going to make them very dark. So for instance, we've got a fence post here, just on this mark here, which is very, very strong. And I'm going to make that very strong. And it comes right off down off the paper here. And make that very, very dark because I want this to show through the pastel. So it'll resist slightly. And then all of these marks here, which will be very difficult to do with pastel, unless we're going to use um, the water to drag them out. But I'm going to show you that as well. So this technique, so I'm going to show you this technique of water and pastel and just how versatile it is. I'm going to start with my China Graph pencil. You don't have to, you can just use only your water and pastel. But for this, but just for this today, these dark lines are coming up behind here for the trees and bushes behind. And these trees here. You see how heavily I'm pushing with this pastel to get it very, very dark. Remember that with these past these China Graph pencils you can't rub them off. So you know if you want to do this work with a pencil first, you're not sure, that's that's fine. Just to give you ideas today, make your marks very much about what you're drawing. So these marks, I'm not doing them exactly about the trees, I'm just making them very much about. the twigs and the way that these broken branches come up and off and so on here. You'll see I'm going to use this later. So this is water and soft pastel. Now this is something that you can't really do as well with the cheap pastels. You can't really use the cheap pastels with water, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this lesson, this workshop with you, is to show you what can and can't be done. The hard pastels will cut into the paper and they don't mix with the water as well. It's only the softer, more expensive pastels where you can do this. Got these lines of twigs and branches coming off and through down here. You know, this lovely effect of these twigs and things like, with like that. And I'm going to do some of this with... Now we could work even... We can work this China Graph pencil over the top as well. This is what I'm going to show you is the versatility of this. Here's my pastel set. I'm going to just put it to one side across here ready to use. I've got my oval mop ready and some water. Now I'm not going to wet the paper straight off. I'm going to put the pastel onto the paper and then blend it in. So we want a lot of sky here at first and I'm going to put mid-tones down first of all and then um, work my work water into my mid-tones letting this start just show through and then, like the pastel paper being coloured, we can let those mid-tones glow through. Now, one of the warnings about pastel paper, well, this isn't, this is watercolour paper, is that pastel paper can change colour. So if you're going to let pastel paper show through your painting, be careful because eventually it could change, it could fade, and, it, and then it won't look right in the painting. If we use pastel or paint as an underpainting, then the colour shouldn't change if the quality of paint is good. So I've got some beautiful rich blues here that I want to work over. I'm going to start with a mid-tone blue here. 
I'm going to start with um, a lovely turquoise and I'm going to just bring that turquoise all the way across the paper. See how textural this paper is? So it's quite good for something like snow. And it's quite a cool blue, isn't it? Different blues have different warms and coolness, different hues. Every colour has a hue. And having got that on there, I'm going to take some water now and brush that in. And you'll notice that the water will fix it. That pastel is the powder, the pigment, mixed with gum arabic and dried out into a paste and then allowed to dry. So the, the gum arabic, like watercolour, is holding it together. It's a medium. And therefore if we mix water with it now and brush it on, it will just turn into like a watercolour again. And look, you see, it's almost transparent. And I could bring that all the way down to give myself a ground right the way through. In fact, I'm not going to here. I'm going to use a slightly different grade just to show you the, different, the differences. Now, I can make that um, more heavy if I want. I could take the same turquoise. I could take a lighter turquoise. Go just down below into the water and drag that through. And look how the water now takes it on. This is just to give you an idea of just how versatile this is. And we can bring more water through that again and make it a thicker mixture so it's less transparent. It's a little bit textured because of this paper. We can brush that out. Now, at this stage, it's almost like um, oil paint. We can move it around with our fingers even. We can make lovely effects in it if we wanted to, like that, for water, if it had reflections, or, or into the sky. I don't want that to happen. I just want it to dry out flat at the moment so I can work colours over it so you can see why in just a moment. Down here I want a warmer grey. with let a lovely warm grey glow through down here. And a deeper blue here. So I'm deliberately now going to use some ultramarine blue all the way across the mountains here. This is a lovely deep ultramarine blue all the way down through here and I'm going to use that blue to glow through my colours in just a moment. Right down to there, again clean water on my brush and let's just bring that blue with the tip of my brush along here. Look at that lovely blue we've got there. So. Nice easy lesson for you just to experiment with, but I don't know what pastels you've got. So, um, you know, as I say, the more expensive the pastel, the softer they'll be, the better they'll work with something like water, as we're doing here now. And look how strong we can make that blue. To let that dry right down, it's going to go down to there. That's going to glow through in a moment. And then as I come down here, I'm going to blend in some warm grey. Take this lovely warm grey here and go all the way across my China Graph pencil. I'll still be able to see it underneath. Just into that edge there as well. Again, water on my brush and we'll brush it in. And you can just see the darkness of the pencil underneath there, look. If we're using watercolour that would show even more clearly. But I've got demonstrations on here of using watercolour uh, already. With, if you look with previous workshops, the pastel workshop last year for instance, and what I want to show you now is how we can use this brush to actually brush this paint, this pastel as paint, into this and actually start to draw with it. And I can start to make the, the feeling of those distant pine trees look. I'm brushing it in here, just across the surface here. Just to the tips of those pine trees, picking up the the pastel, which is now paint, from my lower area here, bringing it up through in little strokes to make these the effect of these trees, these pine trees in the distance. And I can also use those quite thinly. I can start to paint branches of trees and things coming through here by dragging it up and through. So I can do much finer work than I could with the great big pastel. You can still see the dark pastel just underneath the... Um, you can still see the China Graph pencil just underneath there, look. But we're going to paint the lights back into that. I'm going to show you how we can work backwards and forwards with these colours. Right, that gives us that lovely effect of the, of the trees right back into the distance there. We need to let that dry off now, blend it in. You see now, that's fixed already. We're noticing that it's fixed. It's, it's not moving. Once, it, once the water is dried, it's not moving. 
bit more of that blue down the bottom while that's still wet. Just blend some of that blue into there. Bring that up into the shadows a bit more. Just so I've got some lovely blue down there in those shadows. Look how it goes on when it's wet. Remember that the paint will, the pastel will dry lighter when it dries than it looks when it's wet. Bring these blues right up through into there. Right up through into these trees here. I can use the tip of the brush to give the effects of the, the branches here as well. So we've almost lost that China Graph pencil now. It's just glowing behind there. Right up through into there, look. These little branches and twigs that are coming here, I can drag those through with the tip of the brush to get these effects. I've got a painting of a poppy field that you can look at on this uh, channel where I've used the water and pastel completely and I've used rake brushes to get the effects of the leaves of the poppies. OK, let's let that dry a moment. Now whilst that's drying over there, I'm going to come back to this board and I'm going to coat my top uh, paper totally in white chalk. I'm going to take some ordinary school white chalk and I'm going to come across here and really lather it on. Really plenty of lots of chalk on here. Well, some people say to me, oh, I can't afford artist watercolour, I can't afford... But just remember that there are ways of getting good materials cheaply. And the SAA, for instance, supply their own artist watercolours that are half the price of many of the more expensive, well-known watercolours. They supply pastels as well, which are very nice pastels. They're fairly soft, possibly not quite as good as the Unisons in the dark range, but they're still very good value for money. There we go, that's almost there now. I've really got that covered with a nice hard layer of chalk, school chalk. And for the top one, we're going to use this particular picture. I'm just going to take a very light grey for the minute, not anything that will show too much. And you can divide this up into your quarters and eighths again if you want. And use a very light pastel to do that. Don't use your China Graph pencil anymore, that was just for that one technique. So you can just use a light pastel to draw this across. If I just make my marks on here now, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There we are. Now I've only got to work up to the same thing. So if I want that mountain top, I come along this line to here. So that's about a third down, so here I come across there, make a light line, I come to the mountain top a third down from here, that's where that mountain top comes, there. It comes off at this joint here, look, so I can come down to there. It comes to just under a halfway on this one, so there's my line coming down lightly, it's just, I come across from here, there, there goes my halfway point there, it's going to be just under half, so it comes down to there, it comes across here, and look how already my pastel is showing on this line as it's down here. So there we are, we've just drawn my composition, already got my composition just lightly drawn out with a, with a light grey pastel on that one. Down below here, I'm going to do possibly the nicest of the compositions, and that's this lovely one with the trees coming into it, which I wouldn't mind doing as an oil painting sometime as well. And again, uh, we, can, we can divide this up. If you want to, you can just bring the lines lightly across. You can use a ruler if you want to. You can just approximate as I'm doing here. Because you haven't got to be exact. If you say if you're doing a portrait or you're doing something where it's very important that everything is exact, well, fine. Now, my trees are coming about a third up here. There's a curve there that comes just onto that line, look, down to here, that's where that tree comes in in that shape. Keep the shape simple, I'm not going to draw those little branches in, I'm just drawing the basic shapes at the moment, down to here, the mountain comes up to the middle of this, down to there, comes off halfway up here, we've got mountain and cloud coming happening there, mountain there, down into here, up there. That tree is about a third of the way across here. So one, two, three, tree there, 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 
trees here, here, here. The line with the snow comes across here. I'm going to zoom in on these when I actually do the picture, so you able to see it much more, much more clearly then. And then halfway down, there's all these little tufts of grasses coming across. And that's it. I've got my basic composition sorted out. I know where things are coming now. And I've got the actual pastels. We're going to do this one, blocking and blending, the old English style. Right, we're ready to go on those. Let's now go back to the, to the pastel and water. Right, so what I've done now is I've taken my light turquoise and gone all the way across here, across this paper, rubbing it well in. I want to lose all of that texturing of the paper. Very important, I lose all the texturing. Rubbing it right into that dried pastel, which is now fixed. It won't come off onto your fingers. Come across, then I've taken some um, ultramarine and I've brought that across the top here. I want to lose this texturing of the paper. It's much nicer this work with um, a hot press, a smooth paper. And to blend those two together, to get this lovely soft effect of the sky. Now, pastel works by reflecting light. So pastel is much better when you don't blend it, when it goes on fresh. But in this case, I've got to get this effect of these colours blended together. So I'm having to use these which is a bit of turquoise, these colours one over another to blend them in softly across my underpainting. And now I'm going to use both, just for fun, I'm going to use both the 